When I said I'm doing a television show, and I would come back and I would have paint on my clothes and whatever. She thought I'm painting the set or I'm painting. I said no, it's my show. Now they say, why don't you bring it back? Why don't you start it again? For most people, I say you're not missing my content. You're missing your childhood. For my show, we used to plan like months in advance. And here, YouTube and all is so spontaneous. I think Picasso said like every child is an artist. It's just difficult to remain one when you grow up. If our society was slightly different, if we were encouraged to explore our creative side. more i'm sure most people would choose this chalo banate welcome to take a pause with me varun dugirala i always say this that the first question is always a tricky one because it sets the mood for the conversation but actually i've had this question in mind from the beginning of i think from the first chat you and i had about you coming on the podcast is that um, when did you discover art what was that if you remember back was there a moment where like one second this is you know there had the moment where you find something and your mind just goes like oh my god when was that for you ah uh, i i don't remember like a specific time or moment uh, but it was very early like like um, i was a kid and um, i mean we didn't have access like now we have to the internet and stuff for us it was books magazines comic books you know yeah. all of that because our television also was such that you will only get like some animated shows whatever on a sunday you know yeah. rest of the days it's just news and whatever so we didn't have access to like cool imagery that you could draw mm. you know you had to just go back to your books and stuff but i remember one of the band-aids you know like handy plus or something mm. one mm. of those brands they had like a mascot like this kid yeah. standing like that with the yeah. thumbs up and uh if you got like the pack mm. like a pack of 30 or 50 whatever then you would get either a box or like a standing plastic sort of doll that would collect all them so you could open that yeah. and you would have i remember so, used to be that thumb that would like the thumb was the bigger i remember yeah, that yeah, 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 now yeah. that you're saying that remember bigger that visual of correct, that kid yeah, yeah. and with a little bandaid on top yeah. of it and i remember drawing that and trying to copy because it was a very simple illustration mm. of just one kid smiling with one and again the whole four shortening the thumb being big and the kid being small was very interesting mm. and uh, i used to draw that a lot and going back to comic books and drawing from that so i think it started pretty early but i i never realized that i am good at it or i enjoyed doing it yeah um but slowly i saw that everyone around me who was trying the same things couldn't do Mm. uh the, the way i was doing yeah and um that made me feel that yeah what i'm doing is kind of special and yeah. i enjoyed doing it more yeah but there's also something about learning this when you're a kid right because when you're a kid and i often wonder this like i've only started to even find the confidence to like doodle or scribble or even try that in the last few years um because i recollect that for me as a kid the standing joke in my house is when people would ask, you know all those questions like what do you want to be when you grow up right you would be the small kid and you'd walk in Correct. and some say kya banoge and i used to say i want to be a drawer <laughs> i didn't know the word artist existed <laughs> at that age and i said i want to be a drawer um because you enjoy just scribbling and that just felt so innocent to be able to yeah. do that and at some point i don't know where it happens you could this something you can't do you're not good at it and then you don't do it and only now like i would say like as i got older i just gone back to it for the fun of it what do you think is is it about kids and if you want to get into it there's something to it it's almost magical that you can actually create it what do you think that is yeah but first uh, you know this word drawer yeah. i had like an american guy who was yeah. our ep yeah. and even he used to say i think back in america instead of saying artist a lot of people still say he's a drawer you know so he used to say oh rob is a, like if you are and he would even for drawing i think he used to say drawing mm. or something like that so at first i thought maybe it's a mistake but then i saw another person who was also american interacting and said yeah he's a drawer and i, I wasn't like, wrong <laughs> like, how do you but yeah um, i think as kids are um, i don't know man like i think when you are younger first of all there are no restrictions no like our imagination is so vivid and mm. so you want to try and absorb as much as you can and experiment with whatever you have yeah. and when you get a tool in your hand like a pencil or a crayon and you see when you scribble and you form lines mm-hmm. you get fascinated by oh I, i am able to create something and draw something and i think as kids 
because when i see like i do a lot of workshops i've been working with kids for a long time when you give them something to draw mm. you know they automatically break it down to very simple shapes mm. you know and that's very important as an animator we were advised to draw things uh keeping simple shapes in mind like if you see mickey mouse or whatever it's just like circles and ovals and all because those shapes are easier to animate and kids automatically you know do that mm. when they look at like a person they'll be like okay just a circle for body circle for mm. head and then sticks and so i think that comes very naturally to them and when they can do that and they can capture it yeah. um i think they feel that yeah. it's a super power they have and they keep doing it yeah yeah so i don't know what it is but they love it and yeah. i used to love that too when i was a kid yeah. i and i think it's interesting what you said right is that when you're a kid you're not trying to make things more complicated you yeah, you're happy simplify. with simple correct when you get older like everything has to be more yeah, complicated yeah. how do you make this more difficult for myself you're not keeping it simple at all that's why i often say when people ask me like how do you come out i said i always try and think like a child mm. you know and that's very important we like you rightly said we only try and complicate things sometimes things are small like if you try and take a simpler route it will be more fascinating more fun and more mm. interesting than trying to try and act like in a way or behave in a way or put forward things in a way that you're trying to impress someone mm. just do it how it naturally comes to you yeah. and it's mostly simple yeah yeah and at which was there a point as you got older then you started going it was it was fun but then it became some kind of thing why does it only have to be fun can i how do i do more of this in life was there a when was that no i don't like yeah i knew i i love it and uh, i enjoy it um but there was never a moment where i was like i this will become more than mm. my hobby or my passion or whatever i never thought i could pursue it as a career mm. and back in the days um you know nobody considered art to be a lucrative yeah. career option yeah. Yeah. But engineer bano doctor bano yeah. that was the only science karo yeah marks nahi mile become <laughs> commerce karo kuch bhi nahi kar sakte ho arts karo arts karo <laughs> so this was never in the picture or never on the charts that yeah. ye karna hai but um when i finished or was almost mm. finishing my schooling and i also was preparing to become a doctor yeah. and was studying for my medical entrances that is when because of my closest friend like my best friend in school at that time we were both really good at drawing and we would participate for school competitions and things like that yeah. and it was always like abhi kon jeetega yeah. this guy will win or i will win you know it was always like that and his parents were very supportive of mm. what he was doing yeah. and he wanted to join an art college and i remember going with him the first time to yeah. an art school or art yeah. college and then looking at everything around there like the sculptures and the murals and the paintings and like i didn't know this existed i want to be part of this world and that is when it sort of dawned upon me ki mm. ye karna hai this is what i want to yeah. do this is the world that i want to be part of and yeah. not do what i am doing right now because that is making my parents happy mm. uh, but if i continue doing that i'll never be happy yeah. it's also you know i think I, i think about this now because i'm a parent i'm like maybe parents also didn't know what that involved like if if you ask someone what do you teach in in medical college you know okay. <laughs> what do you teach in engineering okay there's some idea <laughs> for some reason at that time was everything was like building things like civil was what it was or, or coding in that sense But you ask one, what happens in an art college? Yeah, you no only have like random things to uh, to talk about. You had no specific knowledge of what that involved. Yeah, most people will think. First of all, they look. Acha art college me ho to abhi kya kar rahe ho? Like hmm. they don't understand only. They they'll be like, okay, this is just a hobby. But what do you want to do with your life? Yeah. What do you want to study after this? I said, yeah. but this is what I want to study. You know, I'm studying <laughs> art. so they don't understand that there is also theory to it you know you have to learn history of art or you know but just the courses or um um like i mean they didn't understand that we spend 4 hours making a poster or mm. a watercolor painting mm. because they're like that you can do at home why do you have to go to a college and learn there yeah. so no one understood it. even when i joined um and that was lack of exposure i think yeah. no one knew yeah. anything thanks to the internet now people can see yeah. even when i made uh the show television show and the things that we did a lot of times when we went out for promotion and stuff mm-hmm. and i met people people said we didn't know this world existed mm-hmm. or there you could do so many things or yeah. in art there are so many different fields or streams or yeah. 
um but even when i joined um, nid and i was studying animation film making i remember the first film i made was stop motion film and i came back home and i was showing it, it was a just a um 30 second whatever thing i had made and i was showing it to my grandmother you mm. know and she looked at it and she was very fascinated she was like but what is this i said these are like little puppets she said but i can't see your hand moving it mm. how are you moving it i said how to explain it to her that yeah. i move it one frame yeah. and i click a picture but she said but i don't see your hand is it a puppet how are you moving so it was just alien to them you know they yeah. didn't understand at all you know what you just said about explaining that's an interesting one um i remember the first time i decided to switch from engineering and that entire stream to saying i want to study media i would go back i would try to explain what i did <laughs> and that too i studied media and ended up working at mtv and so i first said i'm working as a producer say are you putting money into the channel i'm not putting money <laughs> into the channel uh, then they i would say working in television saying do they will give me a camera when their family functions were happening but i have not i don't handle the camera so it's also that right it's like it's almost like it's not just putting people into a box you want things that you can explain Correct. in the simplest format if you will understand the art is the one piece that it, it opens up your mind it makes you creative it's one of the most like i'd say the most important skill set that people need especially in today's world but because you can't explain it yeah I, even like when i started the television show after almost 4 years 5 years of me working and right from like my first year i started working in the industry like i would mm. do storyboard for advertising agencies and yeah. um you know for ads um after my college i would go just for pocket money yeah. and stuff and my college was um i grew up in delhi mm. so um our college was close to the um uh, pragati maidan when mm. trade fair happens mm. and when that happens um you know all these big pavilions are painted and mm. you know each state is representing their thing so they paint big murals and stuff and yeah. a lot of seniors from my college they would go and take on these projects yeah. and paint there so I used to go and my mom and dad they didn't understand like when i told them i'm painting a mural and mm. for them it's like either sign boards mm. been wall painted you know where there are these whatever ads printed so even when i started the television show um my mom didn't understand what i was doing mm. i said i'm part of a television show i'm creating this show and all she didn't understand mm. because after 4 years she sort of understood or grasped the idea of me painting a mural and mm. then okay that is some painting or an art form or whatever now he's painting that so when i said i'm doing a television show mm. and i would come back and i would have paint on my clothes hands whatever she thought i'm painting the set or i'm painting i said no it's my show yeah. but she never what are you doing on the show and also yeah. there was no show like that that existed yeah. so she didn't understand for the yeah. longest time then when the first episode was ready and then i showed that to her mm-hmm. then she was like ah okay this is what it is yeah. but how did the show happen how did the transition from you now you went to art school um and then you went to um, you went to nid and then you came to bombay and at some point you switched from being someone who was working on the art side thing thing one second this is me as a host was it a host thing or was it a this is the way, best way to represent it you know if i got a coin for every time i've answered this question <laughs> i had to I ask you i cannot not ask you this question sir <laughs> in the bahamas on a yacht like <laughs> sipping my champagne <laughs> no so i um i studied animation film making yeah. and um i really wanted to work with couple of studios mm. um animation studios in bombay mm. and i got the opportunity to work with one of my seniors who had his own studio he called me and he said come work with me I'm very excited i came and i was working with him and we worked on really exciting projects um i was making animated content for music channels like mm. your mtv and mm. channel v and around that time another competitive channel mm. um hangama mm. was being launched and we got the whole package to design the channel oh, nice. uh, identity and whatever so the music video and their channel ids you know like fillers mm. and promos and all of that all animated content and that started floating around so then i was getting like calls or messages from friends and peers and uh, saying that oh we saw your work or we saw that project and uh, getting a little bit of appreciation so mm. i was very excited so around the same time i got a call from pogo mm. and they said hey you know we are looking for artists and stuff somebody mentioned your name so mm. we would love so i thought oh my work is mm. has reached there as well mm. and they saw it so maybe i will get to design uh, whatever animated content for yeah. like graphics or something for them as well yeah keeping that in mind i went 
I, I met them and their brief was completely different. They mm. wanted someone not to just be part of the show in terms of designing content and art or whatever, but also someone who will be in front of the camera, mm. which obviously had zero experience, zero knowledge. Yeah. So I said, no, thank you. Yeah. I showed them the work and then I went back. Yeah. So I said, are you sure? And I said, yeah, I'm very sure. Mm. To my luck, I got a call again. They called back and they said, no, we really like your work. Why don't you come down again and have a chat? And then they explained to me that there are many people coming and they're auditioning. At least give the audition. I said, but I, I can't do this. Like I can't be in front of the camera. And sp especially you're giving me a script, a, like, you know, a set of lines. Yeah. I won't be able to memorize and do it. And I saw there were so many actors and some mm -hmm. of the VJs that are on TV mm -hmm. now. Like I think around that time, everyone was doing their rounds, yeah, yeah. you know, to try and become the host or whatever of a certain show. So yeah. they were there and I'd seen some of the people on TV and I was like, I know how good they are. <laughs> I have no yeah. Then I thought, okay, let me just try this. So I was like trying to push and I said, I'll only do it if you let me write my own script or mm. like, you know, a little thing and I'll come because I had come from a film, whatever institute. So I thought I can write my own thing. And I, yeah. so they agreed and they said, okay, we don't have a problem. We just mm. want to see you can do something. So you come. And uh, I wrote a little thing, came, and I was obviously very excited now that I'm getting this opportunity to do my own thing. Yeah. So I did, and that involved, I had these little uh, Tamakol puppets that I had designed, and there's a whole story, mm. and the backdrop was also these big, colorful, like, you know how you have those studio yeah. paper rolls, things like that, and cellophane paper to create the night scene. I painted the cellophane paper with glue, and I threw confetti, yeah. so stars are appearing. So th there was this whole... A skit of sorts that I You performed. were a YouTuber before YouTube was a thing. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that and at the end of it, um, uh, I thought it went off pretty well and yeah. I was excited that I could do it. I remembered everything that I wanted yeah. to do. And our EP at that time, Jules Fuller, he was, he was with Channel V earlier and mm. now he was with Pogo. He was sitting there and he was looking at me. So then I go and say, what do you think? Mm. So he said, I didn't understand word you said no, but I love the way you were jumping around and doing things and I would like to have a chat with you so long story short he loved what I did and mm. then he called me and said we have shortlisted you and I was amazed I was like how is that even possible yeah. and they had shortlisted two people me and another girl mm. um, and uh, she I, and she could talk and present yeah. so I thought okay it's great I'll do the work she'll do the talking yeah. it'll be perfect but she decided she was in JJ studying at that time. She decided she doesn't want to be part of this because mm. that meant starting shoot now. And then she had to skip her college and stuff. So I also said no again, mm. but they insisted. And um, I then I thought, okay, let me just take it up as a challenge and mm. try it out. Worst, I'll fail. You know, I told the animation studio, I'll please, I'll come back after three months. If mm. you're, they said yes. Mm. So then we started shoot and I was... Really, I was very lucky that they gave me a lot of creative freedom to, you know, do what I wanted. Um, so soon from a yeah. host, I became the creative director of the show and started designing what I wanted, played around with the format. And uh, no so sooner the first episode and the first season came out, it yeah. became a, a hit and everyone loved it. Yeah. And that gave me the courage and motivation to do more. Yeah. Yeah. There's this... And the reason I asked you this and 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 I... And then, knew that you've answered this many times is that there is one point right? is that especially if you're someone who practices certain art and especially if you're a, most creative people aren't necessarily performers yeah aren't necessarily comfortable to put in the spotlight you know you want to do your thing and you want to go correct um you don't want to explain it to people you know you want people to get it for themselves and for you to have to be able to make that transition i'm sure you would be like in your head thing one second is this what I should be doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, will I even be any good at it? Uh, I'm sure you had many of those things going and, and and I think of today how, you know, I've had chats with like 16 year olds, 15 year olds, 17 year olds who want to be YouTubers, want to make content. They're all like, have the same thing, right? Like, I think the access of a camera is so easy now. Correct. But you start with, this is a craft and this is how I'm presenting it. Do you feel that having a craft and presenting it takes the load off or do you think that being able to present anything makes life easier? No, I think if I was just a presenter and not doing mm. like the art, mm. I I would really suck at it. You know, I think because I was doing what I'm good at um, and I enjoy, 
um i could like because it was just like okay now i'm going to make this mm. and I, i i love doing this so i'm just going to tell you what the process is like mm. i was just like trying talking to myself kind of thing and mm. also like you know how shoots are mm. at that time um they were like it was like a four camera five camera setup there was like a crew mm. um, around they were just sitting and i had to talk to the cameras look at the cameras and pretend that that's my audience so yeah. it was very scary in the yeah. beginning but over time i was like okay like i mean nobody's like it's not like physical audience standing there mm. so you don't feel that that instant sort of oh they're judging mm. me of what i'm yeah. doing and stuff yeah. but it was also like everyone will see this um am i doing the right thing is yeah. this the simplest way of doing it and i think that pressure also helped me sort of um work a little harder on how i want to present mm. it how i want to simplify mm. stuff um mm. but also i i came from that background of you know i faced a lot of challenges mm. when i wanted to pursue this yeah. so i knew there are a lot of people in smaller cities sitting and living the life that i had yeah. and they will definitely want someone to help them yeah. you know understand what art is how can you become better at it yeah. and how you can apply it to different things and with that mindset i started presenting yeah. and i think over time because i was just it was very natural and you know mm. it wasn't acting mm. um i became better at it kind yeah. of thing but yes you you what you said is right now it's become very easy it's like in nature you pull out your camera yeah. you're clicking selfies and plus with youtube and all like we were discussing it's it's very forgiving like people make mistakes fumble whatever they don't edit it out yeah but for television it was like a, a set script of sorts I never had a script script I used to write my own lines mm. because I was like what I'm doing I might change also if mm. if I add more water then obviously the lines will change I say don't add more water kind yeah. of thing um so there's no script but still it was planned with YouTube is like you turn on the camera and talk to your audience you know yeah. you have that kind of a relationship yeah so it was very different back then yeah there's also this whole point about and, and I look at this whole creative space and I, I, I sometimes feel like because I worked in television I have such a different lens on how to look at content creation today because we didn't have access like you had to work within such constraints yeah that you like you only had this much footage you could shoot or right. you only had this way to edit things or to put things together every single thing was not like something you had available um i always believe that that sparked more creativity because you said only had this much um and now somehow it's like you have access so much more so it becomes trickier um when you start to create digital content did you feel like you had to unlearn stuff yeah yeah absolutely everything <laughs> <laughs> had to unlearn everything that i learned over the whatever past decade yeah. of me working in the television industry because like we were discussing um everything is planned you know it's scripted um, and for my show we used to plan like months in advance yeah you know i had to send the ideas to hong kong i mean office this is what i want to do then the budget will be sanctioned then you sit down and negotiate on no no but you know i want to make this installation this big i need a little more money on this and a little more money on that you sit with your team so everything was planned and here youtube and all is so spontaneous you know the the way you make your content yeah. or the way you present your content or the relationship you have with your audience but i think um when i was working with the channel they also had a lot of restrictions mm. like if i had an idea i had to send an email and tell them this is a new segment that i want to add yeah when i go for the workshops or promotions or whatever i realize people are saying that they are not good at drawing Yeah. I want to start a segment that just focuses on that. Yeah. Instead of making projects, mm. one segment will be how you can draw anything in five steps. Yeah. You know, and then it went back and forth on which segment will this replace, but this the it will change the flow of the show. Do you really think this will work? Should yeah. we test it out? La la la. But with YouTube, like if I wanted to, yeah, I can <laughs> play that format today yeah. and the next episode could be a different format. Like yeah. you have full control. You can see what's working. instantly you can um, you get your feedback from yeah. your audience whether it's working or not so that also helps in some ways yeah and again like my youtube content is like made on i mean like a very small budget yeah you know so that also again is like how can i make something that looks cinematically beautiful but mm. with just like two cameras and like two lights yeah. instead of having an 80 people crew like <laughs> i had for my tv show So yeah, it's different, but uh, it's interesting. Yeah, because and I 
cannot forget this one thing you said to me. I think the first call you and I did when you discussed this is that um, I was talking to you about your show and the impact it had on so many people, right? It's just to discover art from a whole different lens and understanding. And I was like, I was sick of people asking you, saying, when, why didn't, why, when are you bringing the show back? And you <laughs> said something, I won't say it, but I remember clearly what you said. I, I, I'd want you to like tap into that a little bit. Yeah, I think there are so many people connected to that show and it mm. became part of their lives. Um, and then so many people are part of my sort of creative journey. Yeah. So, and it ran for many years. So, you know, it just became part of like, oh, he's going to make this. I'm going to try later. And they enjoyed that. And now they say, why don't you bring it back? Why don't you start it again? I mean, to most people, I say, I have been making shows. I made it for a different channel. I mm. have a YouTube you're not missing my content. You're missing your childhood. You know, that show was part of your childhood and the things you did around that time. Yeah. And that's why you miss it so much. I mean, I still make the same kind of content on different channels and mm. platforms. You're not part of that. Yeah. You're not enjoying that. You're just missing your childhood. Yeah. You know, so it's very different um, because most people I ask them, do you still watch my content on the other channel, Disney? Mm. Or do you watch my content on YouTube? Mm. Do you follow my videos or whatever reels on Instagram? And some people don't even know I exist in these spaces. And yeah. they say, no, I, we stopped following you. I said, yeah, so you don't really want my art back. You yeah. just want your childhood back. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. But it's, it's, it's obviously nice to hear that mm. it did make an impact in so many lives. And yeah. they, they really felt that it was uh, a wonderful show that um, led them to this amazing world of art yeah. where they could explore, um, you know, creativity. Yeah. I actually feel that as you get older, if you actually do tap back into some form of art, some form of creativity, it actually makes you feel maybe a part of what that child in you felt when, when you were a kid. Like I've seen that, like the other day I was sitting with my daughter and, you know, I, I found this thing where you learn doodling. And it was, um, and she wanted to do it on, on the iPad. And so we were doing that together. And I felt like I learned that after ye years <laughs> of not being able to doodle. And so by the end of it, I was doing more of it. And she's looking at me saying, one second, I asked you to do this for me. Uh, but now like, you tell me, no, no, go play with your friends and you're sitting and doing it. It's, it just unlocks something in your head, which I don't think we enough credit for, for adults. I'm putting kids aside for a second, saying adults need to do more of it. Yeah, it's like, I think Picasso said, right? Like every child is an artist. It's just difficult to remain one when you grow up. Yeah. So I think we have art within us, like naturally or whatever. We are creative people. Yeah. Uh, but again, like in our society, mm. we weren't allowed to explore that after yeah. the point. It's like, no, no, engineer, bano, doctor, bano, art, chodo, that's a hobby. Yeah. Uh, if our society was slightly different, if we yeah. were encouraged to explore our creative side more, I'm sure most people would choose this, if not just painting or drawing, but I don't know, photography, animation, you mm -hmm. know, even cooking, like mm -hmm. there is obviously creative thinking yeah. in that too. Yeah. So yeah, I think we are creative. So every time we get yeah. some tools where we can explore our creativity, yeah. we go back to that yeah. five-year-old and like, yeah. say, chalo, banate. It also opens you up, right? Like, you know, everything else you do in your life feels like you are like, has to be structured, has to follow certain rules and patterns. Correct. And and while this still has certain rules, like, you suddenly, like, it's okay to be in chaos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's okay to have stuff thrown around the place. It's okay to have paint on your hands. Um, and I feel that's the mental block many people have. Is that, okay, one second, this, this feels very unstructured. So maybe let's not have someone do it. Yeah, that's why I know like kids when they are drawing, mm. they will paint the trees purple or like an elephant could be green. Yeah. And when we are sitting and drawing, we're like, no, no, elephant has to be gray or yeah. whatever. Mm. And again, it's the set of rules and restrictions that we have only set for ourselves. Yeah. And that's why when we're doing other things, we have to be in this, oh, this is the guideline. This is whatever the terms, mm. this is what you have to follow. And when you are creating some form of art, you let go. You're pushing like the, what do you say? Pushing the rules boundaries of, of your yeah. imagination, you know, yeah. and exploring what you can do with that. Yeah. Do you also, how, how much, um, how much for all does, does creativity, art, etc. play when you are off camera? Because so much of what you've <laughs> created over the years has, has stuck to being, has stuck to on camera. But um, how is the off camera um, creative aspects of, of your life? 
No, I, I think I think the beauty of be, being an artist is there is no on and off button. Like even off camera, I am the artist. I live and breathe art. Even at at a coffee shop, I would be sitting and doodling. Even mm-hmm. on flights, I make these little tiny doodles and art and leave them for the yeah. next passenger or or leave them by the um, um, the counter so that the air hostess or whatever mm-hmm. they get it. Even when I'm traveling or whatever, so I'm always thinking of ideas. I'm always doodling and creating art and. And and I enjoy that, you know. Mm. No matter where I am, I I I can look around and there is enough and more inspiration. Yeah. Um. So it doesn't stop, and I think it it never, in some way, um, there is no stopping. There is no end to it. Like there's no retirement to mm. this job. Yeah. Like and I can always be an artist even when I'm old, mm. and I can even if I'm sitting somewhere on a little chair, I can still draw and doodle and stuff. and i think that's that's the best part of it mm. and my friends my family everyone knows that mm. and they have accepted that the only difference is that when i meet them and go hey guys <laughs> if you like what you see uh-huh. like share subscribe <laughs> <laughs> but they know if he's sitting in a corner is looking out it's not like he's bored he's sad depressed mm. i'm sure he's thinking of something is thinking yeah. of some new yeah. ideas yeah. so yeah um i i can say i'm really privileged that i can keep doing mm. um what i enjoy like all day long But, but do you struggle with creative block ever? Not so much. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes not at all. Like mm. um, I think I have a mantra like a uh, observe and absorb mm. kind of thing. I say that a lot when people ask me about this because I feel that there is enough and more around you. Yeah. Just keep absorbing that information and keep collecting it. That's why like my little journal. If mm. I have an idea, even at like three in the morning, mm. four in the morning. I'll get up and I like I'll just go write it down, yeah. and I'm very visual, so I even draw a doodle next to it and stuff. So I feel that the more information you absorb and store, mm. you know, make your brain like a little library or a bank, and you keep depositing stuff there. Yeah. So whenever you have like a creative brief or you there is a requirement for some idea concept, you can just go to the library and pull it out. Yeah. You know, and I do that a lot. So there are many ideas stored here. Yeah. So whenever I'm sitting down, it's either like flipping through pages or just like going into this. Like that's why I said when I sit down and just look out and go, no, I had like a really great idea to do on this whatever, and I can pull that out now and do it. Mm. So uh, I tell people that if you are stuck, it's either there is no information or there is an overload. Yeah. For no information, what I said, go out yeah. and absorb. Yeah. Uh, go out, meet people, listen to music, read books, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. And if there is an overload, again, take a break. Yeah. You know, sometimes you fill it up so much it's just cluttered, and then you don't know where to go. So it's good to disconnect mm-hmm. and you know move away. And then when you come back, whatever you're doing, maybe you'll have a fresh perspective. Just talk to someone or go for a run, disconnect yourself, and when you come back, most likely you'll have like uh, you look at it differently when you come back. And was that? One of the reasons why you decided to shift base from say hardcore Bombay city life yeah. and all the madness to like uh, you know to a slight to a slightly more calmer peaceful existence. Calmer shows, yeah. I I wanted to move away from this hustle and bustle, um, and I think this is one of the best decisions of my life. I feel personally that you know media industry is very hectic. Mm. very very hectic and even bombay living in bombay it's super hectic man um when i moved here i was very young um i was very driven i really enjoyed the pace of the city is always buzzing and i was so happy yeah. it was like being on um, it was like being on a fast moving train you know and that you can't get off like and you don't want to because you're like yeah i enjoy this pace it's like living in that high yeah. you know but after a point it gets to you you know you feel like yeah like it's enough and when you get down from that bullet train mm. you realize there is another way of living life you know but at that time in some way you're enjoying it so you don't want to be like when i was here i was surrounded by like minded people creative people everyone was doing cool projects big projects you know there was something happening around the corner and you want to be part of it but there was also this pressure of mm. always picking up the best project or performance and stuff mm. but you ignore it you know or you're so busy enjoying it that you don't want to like concentrate on that but that pressure definitely has i mean it comes at a cost you know yeah. and the price is that if you want to live this life then you'll have to make sacrifices and um, when i was busy with work 
I obviously didn't give too much priority to friends and family. Mm. You know, you neglect your physical health. Um, the stress and pressure can damage your mental health. And it starts getting to you. And I was like, it's done. I don't want to be on this fast train anymore because why should you, you know, you don't have to prove anything to anyone. So why should you do this like at all times? So I said, okay, let's move to Goa and see. Mm. Uh, thankfully now, because of internet and the kind of work I do, I can function from there, but it's a quite a calmer life. Yeah. You know, I'm more relaxed. It's low paced. It's not that I've retired, but I figured out a balance between my work life and my uh, personal life. Um, I save a lot of time because yeah. there's no Mumbai traffic, um, no social obligations. So all that time uh, I prioritize and I can give it to my friends, my mm. family. I can fo focus on myself. I have access to nature, access to the beach. So whenever I want to take a break, I can go for a run, for a swim. I come back and I'm refreshed. So I'm enjoying this slow paced life. And also it's not like I've moved away um, to Goa. So I don't have any work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm picking up lesser projects, but I'm doing some amazing deals, working with some really amazing brands, big brands doing big projects. But yes, I'm away from the noise, I'm away from the yeah. hustle and bustle, away from the yeah. media hub. Yeah. So it's a win-win for me. And you know, there is something, you know, we all have this, this is cycle you hear about. I think that cycle got broken in the last couple of years. Where people say, you know, you work for a certain amount of time, so then you can retire and enjoy yeah, yeah, all the yeah. things you want to enjoy. Um, but I feel one of the things that the pandemic did was really tell us in one second, what if you don't live till then, you, Correct. you won't even get to enjoy it. And since so many people make that jump to say, no, this is not how I want to live or this is not the pace at which I want to drive myself. And now... It also unlocks so many parts of you where you feel liberated that you can. Do you feel that like it unlocked more create, creative juices out? Because suddenly like you didn't have the, you know, the hustle bustle you believe is what dri what's driving you to create more. But actually being in more peaceful sp uh, spaces unlocks so much more. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Because I have more time to myself and there are so many things that I really want to do. Otherwise, you are so busy um, moving from one project to the other. And when you're here, I mean, it's also really expensive to live in a city like Bombay. Yeah. So you also are chasing money. You know, you want to pick up a bigger project because you want like a better house, a better car, all of that. Um, so in a way, you're so busy doing um, what is just available. Yeah. You don't sit back and go, you know, I actually wanted to do this in life. And this is what, um, like your passion project or mm -hmm. something. When I moved to Goa, I really wanted to create, like I always used to think that when I was a kid, I used to go for all these fairs, you know, mm. like your melas and things. And there were so many things that were happening. They were like a circus, yeah. you know, it's live acts and things. Yeah. I really want to do something like that with art. Like when you go abroad, you have these musicals, like, you know, you can go and watch people perform on stage. I said, you don't do anything like that with art. Yeah. Why don't I create like an art show that people can sit in an auditorium and watch? Like most people enjoy when I create these larger than life uh, art pieces and installations yeah. on yeah. my show, which is just a two minute segment. What if that happens live on stage? You know, I had that time to think all of this and mm. I developed a show sitting in Goa, yeah. which was India's first travel art live show. We did yeah. shows in Chennai and Bangalore and it was a hit. And I was amazed that I could, you know, do that. Otherwise, I was just busy with like, mm -hmm. TV kar liya, abhi digital kar abhi next video kaun sa, next brand kaun sa. So yes, it definitely helped me um, explore, yeah. you know, some of these things when I was um, in Goa. Yeah. Travel also is a strong part of what you really drives you, right? Yeah, yeah. I think traveling makes you a storyteller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was, I always believed that no matter what you do, if you have like an interesting story, um, to your art, people will connect and bond with that more than your art. And if mm. you form that bond, they're never going to leave you. Mm. You know, so every art piece of mine, I try and tell a story through that. Mm. And I feel that if that connects, then um, even if there are times you fail, people will still be like, no, 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 next time I'm waiting for the next story or the next twist. And that's why most of the times my art pieces are such that, they, you know, I take them like it flows through. Mm. There is a little build up. People are anticipating, abhi kya hoga, abhi kya hoga. Yeah. And there is a twist at the end. Yeah. And I think that only came because, um, you know, when I was traveling and I was meeting people and I was listening to their stories or trying new food or looking at new colors yeah. and stuff. So I think traveling is a big part of 
um me uh, delivering what i deliver yeah so actually traveling also opens up one more thing right is that if you actually spend time and just observe how different cultures and different people function like you said it, it also helps you look at the world differently absolutely you don't look at it within the same like you know because you all grow up with this okay this is how the world is right and you suddenly go to another country and they're like could doesn't have to be another country could be another city you go yeah. when you suddenly see this small shift it could be just how like you know someone uh, someone's restaurant functions or it could be just like how there's the good one particular waiter somewhere who has like some um so for me it is always like i would pick up characters yeah like that's an interesting character right so in my head i would always like I would be like okay maybe one day i will use it somebody if i end up writing something which is that way um or i'll say okay when this is how like a certain dish tastes so again that would stay you know that experience would stay and, and once you collect that I feel for me, I, I collect those. <laughs> my ideas never stay in my head. I have to put them down, or else I'll forget them. And I'm always like, I had an idea, I don't know what it was. <laughs> you, you luckily have that ability to store them. I'm like, it's gone uh, if I don't put it down on paper. But as if you actually explore it with that context and yeah. not just say, okay, I'm, I'm, even a holiday becomes like a mission, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, these are yeah. the things I'm going to do. Let me, that then you're never going to get it. Correct. Correct. Yeah so you know if, if when i was at nid we had a course called pnc mm. personality and caricature mm. and part of that course was doing this where you had to go and observe people mm. so you go sit at a coffee shop or like a chai stall or mm. like an auto stand or a bus stop and just look at people and observe and you can pick anyone yeah and follow that person you know try and see if that person comes there every day and see what they're doing this was basically helping us uh, developing characters so if you're developing a character for a film yeah. what are the characteristics characteristics and what's the personality like yeah. what are certain quirks about that character so all of that and it was so fascinating to just go and i remember this this is when i was in uh, nid this was the time when very few people had mobile phones so yeah. there was that std hmm. booth yeah. you know people yeah. would make calls so we had to go sit and like try and hear like the conversation <laughs> they're making to try and understand who this person is and was very fascinating another thing um again i also do this a lot like and i remember the first time i went to the andamans uh, in the evening i was sitting down the sun was setting and Uh, it was low tide hmm. and i saw like from the village one person came out and with the cycle spoke like hmm. he had made like a little spear and with the tube yeah. he had cut like a little strip and tied it so he made like his own harpoon or whatever like a little thing and he was holding in a little bag and with his son who probably was 7 8 years old he was walking and they went in and in the corals they kept looking there were tiny fish and all and he pulled that thing and wait there for a while and then let it go and would go pierce the fish and would collect and by the time they came back they were like yeah i collected dinner yeah. you know so i was so fascinated by that i said i've never seen anyone doing this like yeah. fresh catch from the thing and not going in a boat not with a net yeah. i'd never seen anyone do this like yeah. and then when you study like the tribals there used to do that like you know when they swim in with their little harpoons or spears yeah. and they would catch live fish and stuff like that so it's very interesting to capture like all of these little yeah. stories and find characters that you yeah. can store yeah. and use someday when you're talking about the father and the kid i'm thinking that you know, a lot of parents today i feel want their kids to be exposed a lot more to the creative side to art than it was then this you know before um what is the fundamental that they need to understand if they want to expose the kid, kids to it and also not make it into like a this is not extension of school you know it should feel fun but what what should parents think about i don't know i think the most important thing is i i feel that most parents focus a lot on and i understand like my parents did the same thing because of lack of exposure they were focusing only on the academics and you should learn this you should learn that oh everyone is learning computers you also mm. learn computers mm. if everyone is learning how to play the guitar you should also learn but i don't want to play the guitar maybe i want to play the piano you know mm-hmm. like oh i don't want to learn computers i want to play ball mm-hmm. so you need to f- try and understand what your kid likes what the strengths are and i think most importantly let them be outdoors you know spend time in nature mm-hmm. let them see how things grow how things you know let them i don't know like touch and feel things mm-hmm. absorb all of that mm-hmm. like what a tree texture feels like you know how i remember we were shooting somewhere and the producer she was young she was like 26 year old and um, 
one we we were we were shooting and there was one kid and he got a squirrel yeah mm. like a baby squirrel and he was sitting there and she said what what animal is that i said mm. you have never seen a squirrel in your life and she was a city girl and she has never seen it you know and then when she sat down and started playing with it and she was like so fascinated by this little creature and mm. i said you didn't spend time she said no we didn't get the opportunity to and mm. i think you learn a lot when you spend time outdoors yeah. um travel just step outside do those kind of exercises and you don't really have to focus on because that only teaches you a whole lot yeah, yeah i was um, while you were talking i was thinking about one thing right is that uh, the other day um, so i have a 10 month old at home and he keeps now he's learned to crawl so he's like this one jet pack going around the house you notice one thing that he'll go across the any plant he will spend time in just holding the leaf and he'll feel the texture, texture. he'll go to like a pot and he'll so everything is texture Yeah. So while you were saying that, my first recollection was that, like, literally, like, ten months old. But that's what he's focusing on—just the texture of things and just feeling them out. Correct. Um, we take it almost for granted as we get older. Yeah, because we're like, yeah, we know, like, we we can see, or we can hear, we can smell. That's it. Now, yeah. touch and all is gone. You see a tree, you're not gonna go touch it. You yeah. see an animal. Very rarely people go and pet like a dog or anything. Yeah. You see a rug. I've seen like kids. If a kid is playing here, they'll come and they'll feel the texture of the rug yeah. or the carpet. we will see we'll go ah maybe it's soft ah. because more rugs like this are soft like we are just using our stored information yeah. and not really exploring it yeah. but kids they love to experiment and explore and they should be allowed to do that more so that they can figure out and absorb what they want to yeah. like they can collect the information like they are receiving it yeah. and not like oh you've been told this is soft this mm. is hard this is sharp yeah. and this is what whatever do you how do you look at that lens when you because a big chunk of the content you you always made as focused on diy viral how you can do it yourself and one is if you give too many rules it can be restrictive but you, what you said about how kids actually need that open canvas how how do you balance that out first of all when i was doing um, like this diy content on my show like the way we used to present uh, the way i used to present it was never like i'm teaching you it was mm. always like i'm having fun doing this mm. you know and if you enjoy it because we realized that um you know kids they have enough and more people around them like their parents the teachers elder siblings whatever everyone is trying to teach them and preach yeah. you know they don't want to listen to another person yeah. so i thought the only way i can convey this message is i'll say i am doing this and i'm having a lot of fun doing this yeah. and the materials i'm using are very unusual you know i'm not giving you your regular tools of just the pen pencil brush that you would go to your hobby class or yeah. your uh, um, art class in your school yeah. you know i am not teaching you to paint with the brush i'm going to teach you how to do painting using playing cards i'm mm-hmm. sure there'll be an old deck of playing cards yeah. lying in your house you yeah. can go pick it up yeah. you have about what 52 yeah. so you have 52 like a set of 52 to tool, whatever tools yeah. uh and that they really enjoyed so i was creating art with things that were lying around in the house hmm. so one they have access to all of this so there is no excuse and no complaining <laughs> yeah. that i don't have the materials yeah. and two because it's lying there you are sort of tempted or encouraged to like pick it up and say let me give it a shot i mean he did it it looked easy yeah what's the worst that can happen yeah so you know that was sort of like the idea and aim but when i started this kind of content like this term diy didn't had not even come into existence hmm. you know in like a normal sort of conversation yeah. this thing because of the internet it became a thing like yeah. okay diy videos or yeah. whatever we used to call them makes yeah because we were making stuff uh, in our normal whatever lingo you would say mm. this is an easy make this is a medium make this is a hard make so mm. we were making stuff at that time i realized because there was no internet very few books on this subject um there was a need mm. people enjoyed getting their hands dirty and you know when you make things yourself there is a certain sense of accomplishment that oh i made this you know it gives you confidence you want to try more yeah um plus all of this helps you build focus and concentration so you are trying to create something mm. um yourself um so we focused on that and i did but because i did so much of that we had such a huge library the channel was like okay and now we're going to recycle this stuff yeah. you know for a, for an artist that meant that i will get less opportunity to make new content yeah so what time i was like okay and that was one of the reasons i parted ways hmm. and i said okay i'll figure out 
where I can do this. And I realized YouTube is great because yeah. the kids who are watching me have transitioned to this. Mm-hmm. So I'll start my journey here. Uh, but over time, I saw that when YouTube was growing, that there were many more players mm. that were doing the same thing now. Yeah. Okay. That I was doing for many, many years. Uh, and now they also had access to international creators. Yeah. So after a point, I realized that now I don't think they need me to do this. Mm. So now what I do is if I really feel like doing something, like if I see some artists and they have yeah. created some really cool kinetic toy and I said, yeah. how did he do it? I, yeah. I should give it a shot. Yeah. And I make it and I, I I like the process. I'll make a DIY video out of it. Yeah. Or if like my community or like my following, they, they say, please teach us this. You know, we saw yeah. this and we don't know this. No good tutorial anywhere. I'm sure you will crack it and you'll do yeah. it. Then I do it. Or if there is a brand brief. Otherwise, now I focus more on creating content that is more sort of entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, also, DIY videos are very difficult to shoot. They are very hard to shoot because mm-hmm. you have to keep the pace in mind, yeah. the flow in mind. You don't want to jump steps. You want your audience to understand what you're doing. You need to yeah. simplify it, break yeah. it down. Edit takes time. Those videos are long. You know, audio you have to record. And the short form content that I do now, I can do like two or three in like just few days because yeah. it's just 30 seconds to a minute and it's yeah. just cut to music. Yeah. So I focus on doing that more, which is slightly more cinematic, fun, entertaining yeah. and I enjoy it. And your short form is, I feel, I feel you know, it's so interesting because I never know what I'm going to get. <laughs> when I'm for the next one there's always this thing if I'm saying one second what's going to happen on this one today <laughs> then it comes out because it's also liberating because you don't have to follow a set pattern right yeah. you just oh, the only I think restriction is the duration you might want to stick Correct. to but others you can do whatever you want to kind of create some form of creative expression yeah yeah and I enjoy that because it gets like a lot of people ask me um, you know what is your signature style mm. and I don't know if I have one yeah. because I don't yeah. focus on just one thing. It just mm-hmm. gets, if it gets monotonous, I'm like, okay, I'm done with this, you know. <laughs> so I, I enjoy that I get to do different things every time, whether I'm working with different materials or I'm experimenting with different techniques or just art forms. I could be doing a paper art thing and now I'm doing doodling, I'm painting a mural. Yeah. So it keeps me busy. It keeps me, my ideas are fresh. So it keeps me also motivated to keep doing. And at mm-hmm. times I have to learn things. You know, so I'm also educating myself in this process because now I'm done with my school or whatever this thing. So how do I learn? So when mm. I'm trying out these new art forms, like I said, if I see an artist, as the, I reverse engineer it mm. and see how I can, you know, crack this technique. And it's, it's great learning for me to work with different tools and materials and stuff. But yes, I feel that is my, maybe if I can say that that's my signature style, that I take my viewers on a journey that at the end of it, there will be like, uh, a twist at the end or like th- there is that element of surprise yeah yeah through this entire journey w- was there a piece of advice you got that stuck with you from anyone I think my mom she used to always say um, invest in people mm. and not things you know don't ever chase money you know uh, build relationships that is more important money will come and go but, um, you know, when you are you have tough times, uh, there will be people around you. So always be nice to people, be kind to everyone, yeah. um, always smile, help people, you know, always be there for them, yeah. kind of like that. And that really helped me a lot. Like, so anyone around me, my friends, my family, I try. And that that's why I said, like, when I realized that this work and this pressure is taking me away from my family and my friends, I was like, I don't want, if I want to sacrifice, even if I have to sacrifice all of this, I yeah. will give it up yeah. for my friends, for my family. So that was like the biggest advice um, that I can also give anyone, yeah. invest in people. Yeah. You know, I can keep going on in this conversation, but on the show, we, we make sure that the conversation sticks to an hour and we're just about hitting that point. So that's <laughs> a good time to close this and hopefully get you back to deep dive into some of these aspects again. But thank you so much for coming on the show, Rob. It's been, it's been fabulous to have you on it. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me.